Take 9,662. I cannot lie, I've been filming this for a while. So, what has been happening? My audio has been fucky and echoey. Basically, if I push my computer closer to the wall, it echoes more. It's confusing, I know. But also, I've been busy working. Anyway, let me just get the intro out of the way immediately. I wanted to make a video like this for a while. The whole thumbnail here is the whole reason why I'm making this video again. Because I love this thumbnail, I worked so hard on this thumbnail, and the video originally was so close to being finished before I straight up cut it. But, I want to make this video so badly, especially with the information that we have now, and what has been happening. So this is about the tournaments of Misfits. We haven't made a video on Misfits for quite a long time since the KSI card. And it's been going okay, I think, recently. The couple events haven't been great, but they haven't been terrible. But one thing that has come up that is new and different is this new style of tournaments that they're doing for certain belts. Right now, it is the lightweight tournament for the interim belt to go and fight Dean. And then the other one is the cruiserweight tournament for the vacant belt because Bitch Boy... Uh, retired it for some reason. I don't know why he even had the belt originally in the first place. I mean, bragging rights, definitely because of his ego. But the whole thing with these tournaments is actually a really good idea. It's taking the kingpin strategy, but making it a lot more, uh, how do we say it, competitive. Kingpin was great. It's still one of my favorite events, so underrated, and the style of the tournaments was incredible. It's still unmatched, even with them trying to recreate it here with the certain weight class, it is still unmatched in its aura and how it worked. But what I can credit more about the Misfits tournament is that there's stakes here because of the possibility of winning that belt or going on to fight and beat. Dean potentially for the lightweights so you have to have a pretty stacked tournament and then that's where everything goes wrong and this is where the original video wanted to come in this was before the cruiserweight tournament was announced and it was just the lightweight tournament it was all finished up being announced and this was right before uh, Fox was about to go fight main event and before most wanted pulled out and all that what here's the thing it was going perfect. The tournament was going perfect in the amount of picks and who was getting picked. But then it failed. We got Wally, Joey Knight, Yuddy Gang TV, Lil Cray Cray, Ace Musa. Five perfect competitors. There are three left. Who could it be? Who can it be? Adam Sala, Fox the G, William Haynes, maybe Jack Manifold. Any of those guys. It would be perfect it would be awesome then we get the announcement for tasmanian devil now to this day i'm still perplexed and question why why did we get a random shorts youtuber with barely 7k and who hasn't fought since 2018 this guy hasn't fought in six years because of a shoulder injury, which we'll get into later. Why is this guy coming in? Uh, okay, there are two spots left. We could still do very good. Okay, cross your fingers. Fox the G, Fox the G, Adam Sala, Adam Sala. Argentinian King? Another random, another random. Higher view count, sure, but this random dude who trains with B-Dave? Okay, well you have one, one more shot, one more shot. Who's it gonna be? Who? Baby Hulk. Baby Hulk. Now, granted, out of the other two, the way better choice, but this guy is five foot exact. He is tiny, and he he's an MMA fighter, so he's not a boxer. So why are we bringing this dude in? End of the day, 
sure, we still have new competitors and new ideas of where this could go. But the whole competitive element was just subtracted from it. it just made everything a hell of a lot more complicated. <laughs> That was disgusting. Anyway, it made everything so much more weird. And I get it, right? You're trying to build misfits and you're trying to bring in new people. But for a tournament like this, and this was my original point I wanted to say. Way back in February, I wanted to make this point. These tournaments should be for returning fighters only. This should be for the best of the best. The ones that have shown... That they can absolutely beat the fuck out of somebody. And while Lightweight is pretty stacked, it's also very scarce. So I understand that's hard. But you can do way better than fucking Argentinian King and a dude who pulls out for a shoulder injury. So then we get into the pullouts, right? You have the tournament complete. Okay, cool. But then we have things going wrong. First of all, we have Yeti Gang and Lil Cray Cray being cut off short when Lil Cray Cray was dominating the fight back in March because of a bomb threat. Still, that was one of the most horrible things to ever happen in YouTube boxing history. Hopefully, will never happen again. And next after that, we have fucking Tasmanian Devil pulling out for the shoulder injury that I mentioned before. So it seems like that will be a career ender. Like, I don't think he's coming back from that if it's a double whammy. So just stop putting him in the conversation. Just take him out completely. He's not coming back. So we had no opponent for Argentinian King. We had A-Pop about to come. And then Britain's worst boxer that wanted to fight Deji. Then we had Pauly. And Pauly seen as like one of not really like great what lightweight and one of the worst some people like to say but he is pretty good in my opinion and i said he was gonna be ak on five days notice nobody believed me at all but i always knew argentinian king was the worst in the tournament and he fucking proved it he fucking proved it because Polly beat him up for three rounds and teased the shit out of him on five days notice then what happens he gets fucking robbed so he got robbed of his spot in the semi-finals bullshit man so then we have argentinian king second one in the semi-finals after joey knight obviously knocked out baby hulk because he's too fucking tiny okay so then we have the rematch between Yuddy and Cray Cray. Who wins? Ends up being Yuddy. In a great change of pace performance. Everybody didn't expect this upset. Yuddy again gets the win by split decision. It's cool. Some people think Cray Cray won, which is fair. I did it in the moment, but on rewatch, Yuddy definitely won. So okay, we have everything pretty much set. We have the first semifinal set. With Yeti Gang TV versus Argentinian King. Then, next up, we had Wally Eat Sharks versus Ace Musa setting up a fight that was supposed to happen on Misfits 5 that ended up getting canned thanks to Ace failing his medicals, unfortunately. It would have been a banger fight, especially after the fight that did happen, but it didn't end up being Waleed. Because Waleed this time had a pull out because he fucked his leg he fucked up his leg so he couldn't fight so that left ace musa without an opponent so what do they do misfits fucks it up more they bring back cray cray now this is what kind of fucks me over a little bit why do you bring back the loser in like this kind of like Oh, you could have a second chance type thing. It it doesn't work. And he doesn't deserve that because because like he had his chance. He he already got a second chance. This is a fucking third chance to earn a spot. And he got it out of nowhere. It should have been somebody else on notice. 
I've suggested so many people and there were so many people like training at the time. It could have been so many other people that could have fought Ace. You know what? I bet if Fox at the time, like he didn't do the tournament before because he got offered the main event first. But I mean, I know it's late notice, but Fox is a motherfucking G and I bet he would have faced Ace on five days notice. No joke. I, I think that would have been a great fight. And I think you could have like so many different better fights and fighters that deserve a chance at this tournament. But you bring in Cray Cray. So fine. Okay. Let's see how this fight goes. Oh, looks like Ace ended up winning. Eh, it's, it's whatever, right? You know, you know, like he, he did a great performance. He's a really good boxer. He could definitely look good with that belt. He just got robbed. Bro, we're fucking cooked. He just he just got fucking robbed. Okay, well, same night. Let's see. Yuddy and Argentinian King. Obviously, Yuddy ended up beating his ass for five rounds and putting an absolute clinic on him because Argentinian King sucks dick. So, we have this final setup. Our first YouTube boxing trilogy, which is super, super cool. But why is this happening instead of an actual competitive fight? For the lightweight interim belt. They messed up the tournament from the start. For many different reasons that I'll get into after talking about the cruiserweights. And now we have an obvious winner. It's going to be Yachty Gang. Because from the first fight Cray Cray had. To his fight against Ace. To his fight against Joey. Which I didn't even mention. I, oh man I'm out of whack guys sorry. So he ends up fighting Joey and while I thought since he gasses out quick and he's gotten cracked by Yuddy and Ace I thought Joey with some power would actually crack him but Joey would go on to lose to Yuddy because he's very overrated I ended up being proven half right by Joey getting fraud checked by Cray Cray for three out of five rounds all the while True Jordy is slobbering on Joey's nuts so that's cute Ended up getting early fraud check. Okay. But. It keeps going on and on and on. So we have the obvious. Um, winner of the tournament. Yuddy. Against Cray Cray. Um, because just no improvement. Shown. And the aura from Cray Cray is gone. I just, I just can't. But we have another tournament. That's been going on. The Cruiserweights. So when this got announced, it was sort of the same problem as last time, but instead of hyping it up just to be disappointed, they announced it all at once. So here's the lineup for the Cruiserweight Tournament originally. So we had Faze Temper, Le'Veon Bell, DK Money, DTG. Then we got the three that don't belong again. We got Poppy Luisito. Mike Edwards and Jake Cornish. Two new guys who have never boxed before and one guy who sucks absolute dog ass. Poppy Luisito is the guy who lost to Minicon. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He lost to the worst influencer boxer out there. The dude who fucking lost to Chase Damore. Are you fucking kidding me, man? Oh my god. He lost the Minicon, and that was really fucking stupid fight. So, he's now in the tournament. It's obvious Tommy is going to knock him out, so, like, whatever. But then, as we get to it, ends up pulling out for whoever knows what. So, I mean, like, the fight that was supposed to happen in Miami for him is now changed to face temper versus Josh Bruckner in his return fight after getting knocked out by Salt Poppy. Okay, that's actually fine. Josh is a lot better, even though he seems a little worse. He's a lot better. So, we still have a pretty good bracket. Let's see how this ends up being. So, Le'Veon Bell wins his fight against Tristan Ham, who I forgot to mention. I'm forgetting everything tonight. I apologize. So, he beats up fucking Salty Boy. Uh, little Diego, he likes to call him. 
for five rounds and ends up knocking him down and beating his ass. So we end up seeing Liv obviously winning and ending up going on to fight the winner of Mike Edwards and Jake Cornish. Okay, so then next we have Tommy and Josh, and unfortunately, in my opinion, Josh ended up winning by knockout again. Tommy's chain got cracked, and Josh really did send him into retirement, which is honestly for the better for Tommy, and I really hope the best for him, but it's going to be pretty hard. I'm going to miss him a lot in this scene. So, ends up sending him into retirement. Now, Josh is in the mix going to the semifinal to the winner against DTG and DK Money. Oh, wait. No, it's not even that. It's DTG and Minicon? Okay, it's the guy who beat Poppy Luisito. Sure. But are you are you positive about this? You want to... You want to bring in Minicon, of all people. And I, I don't think there's really any excuse. Because Cruiserweight is so much more stacked than Lightweight. Lightweight, I can understand that. Like, it's stacked, but it isn't. It's scarce. Cruiserweight was the weight that the influencer boxing scene was built off of. There are so many people who you could have called, and yet you chose a heavyweight moving down as well. It doesn't make any sense. So, okay, we get that fight. See how that goes. DTG ended up getting robbed. So, great. So, now we have an obvious who's going to the finals. And then Mike Edwards ends up beating Jay Cornish. But he gets cracked multiple times by a guy who is 5'7". Well, he is 6'6". Six six. So, 6'1", six Le'Veon Bell should have any sort of problem with him. So, we have, obviously, the finalist. Uh, Le'Veon Bell is going to have a great fight with Mike Edwards. It's still going to be a great fight. Don't get me wrong. That fight is going to be awesome to see. But, it's obvious Le'Veon is going to win it. Then we have Josh Bruckner, who is obviously going to kill Minicon. Like, I think we're actually going to see a homicide here. This is actually going to be fucking brutal. Like, I don't think Minicon is going to last a single round. Like, the power and his chin has been tested more and more and more. And I think he gets hit with, like, two good shots. I think he's going to sleep. So, our finalists, Josh and Lev. Who's going to win? Obviously, Le'Veon. Because Josh got cracked by Salt Poppy. Salt Poppy is now oraless and, like, basically has nothing. His... Most recent win was against the dude who's been knocked out in every single fight. And his other one was against this MMA guy who threw all caution in the wind and ended up fighting like Dylan Dennis. So, Lev is going to knock Josh the fuck out. So, we have our finalists and our winners already fully picked out. Fully picked out for both. This whole strategy could have been so much better. And mainly for the lightweights too. The, the lightweights could have been figured out so much better. But cruiserweights too. You could have just done so much better. So I kind of want to explain here. Because I know I've been talking so much just about what they did wrong. I want to talk about what they could have done right. So first of all the matchmaking. The matchmaking needs to be a lot better. What they picked out for these last three guys was just a drop out of a hat. It's people who don't belong. People who are new. People who haven't proven themselves to be worthy of a chance. That they can do stuff different to these guys in the scene. I mean, you have great picks for this tournament. And then you just have... The ones that are wonky. Like I get it. Build the scene. Bring in new people. Not for the tournament. Bring in people like Dr. Mike. Bring in people like JMX. For the cruiserweights. Bring in like I said Fox the G. Or William Haynes. Or Jack Manifold. Or Adam Sala. For the lightweights. Bring in better guys. Because the guys they picked. Out of the drop of a hat. At the last moment. 
or not it. Secondly, do your quarterfinals on the first night. This is what Kingpin did better than them. I get it. Build your cards. Make your cards bigger. But you could have all the fights and no scheduling issues, no injuries happening between months if you did it all on the same night just like Kingpin. It could have succeeded so much better. So much better. If you did the quarterfinals on the same night, then you figured out scheduling for the semis, and then you finally finish it off with the finals, which would be just one fight, so you can stack a card around it or put it on a stacked card, like they're probably going to do with the lightweight tournament. Those two things change everything and make it so much better because if you did it all on the same night, Waleed wouldn't be injured, Yadi and Cray Cray probably wouldn't have had a bomb threat, and fucking... Argentinian King would actually get to fight someone who's picked better than Tasmanian Devil. The whole tournament could have been fixed so easily if it was just thought about a lot more. And that's just two things. Whole point is higher placement and more focus, better matchmaking, and finally but not least, time management. Could have made these tournaments so much better so much better because they had so much potential everyone got so excited about youtube boxing again just for it to be an absolute disappointment and i don't want that i want so much better so if they ever do this in the future say for welterweight because jarvis doesn't really have an opponent really set after he fights Luis Pinedo or Ben Williams in Qatar. Or say like middleweight or something after the Gibb and Slim fight. Just match make it so much better. And everyone will appreciate it more. Everyone will know how to feel about it. And make sure everything is managed right. So yeah. Anyways guys. To quote a great man, do better.